Today I'm going to share with you my six tips for settling your property damage claim with the insurance company after a car accident. The tips I'm gonna share in this video could save you literally thousands of dollars on your property damage claim, so stick around. Before we get started, let me say the tips in this video are not going to be a bunch of legal jargon or high level fluff. What I'm gonna share with you are going to be actionable, tactical steps that you can use to settle your property damage claim as soon as possible so that you can get back on the road. In fact, these are the exact tips that I share with my clients who hire me for their personal injury claim. Fortunately, settling your property damage claim is much easier than dealing with your personal injury claim if you know what you're doing. So before we get into the meat of this video, let me give a quick disclaimer. This is, video is for educational purposes only. It is not legal advice. Do not rely on it as legal advice. So with that said though, let's get in to the first tip. Tip number one, get supporting evidence. The insurance adjuster who's assigned to your case is going to first make a decision about who is at fault for the wreck. And if their insured driver caused the accident, they will pay for your car. So you wanna make sure that you present the best case possible to the adjuster that you did not have any fault in causing the wreck. There are basically three types of evidence that the insurance adjuster is gonna to wanna to look at to make sure that you didn't do anything wrong, to make sure that you did not cause the accident. What kind of evidence are we talking about here? Well, number one, the adjuster is gonna look at the crash report. The crash report is the report that's prepared by the police officer who shows up at the scene of the accident. The report will have things on it like a diagram of how the accident happened, who hit who. Uh, it'll include witness statements if there are any. It will include details about the driving conditions, the speed limit, the location where it happened, the cars involved, the passengers, how many people were involved in the wreck, all kinds of details. And then that gets filed with the Texas Department of Transportation eventually. So they all look the same and you can actually get a copy of it and the insurance adjuster on your case will get a copy of it to decide who is at fault. The second thing the adjuster is going to look at to de decide whether to pay for your car or not is witness statements. So were there any witnesses at the scene of the accident? Did they see who hit who, who caused the wreck? If so, you're gonna want them to stay at the scene of the accident until the police officer gets there and then have them give a statement to the police officer so that you've got written proof to support your version of the facts. If there's a disagreement over what happened, who hit who, how the wreck unfolded, the police and the adjuster are going to place a lot of weight on what the neutral witnesses say happened in the accident. If you have a witness who is insistent, they're in a hurry, they want to leave, they, don't, they can't stick around until the police get there, at least write down all of their contact information, write down their name, their phone number, email address, get their mailing address, their residential address, and write down their license plate or take a picture of it if you can. All of this is going to come in handy later and the police officer is going to want that when he or she arrives at the scene of the accident. So. Uh, definitely do that. Witness statements can be a powerful piece of evidence to support your property damage claim and get your card paid for. The third type of evidence that can be very helpful is photographs at the scene of the accident. Now, you are the first person there at the scene of the accident because you were involved in it. And that gives you an advantage. You get to take photos of everything at the scene before anybody else does, immediately after the accident happens. So you're gonna to wanna to take lots of photos. Photos can help recreate the scene for people who weren't there, including the insurance adjuster. So what do you wanna photograph? Well, you definitely wanna take lots of photos of all of the damage to your car, the damage to the other driver's car, the road conditions, any tire marks, skid marks, the traffic, the weather conditions, the road conditions, basically anything at the scene of the accident so that the adjuster can see that what you're saying happened, your version of events matches what your photos say. 
Uh, and you know, a picture says a thousand words. So take lots of photos. If you have a smartphone, that shouldn't be a problem at all. Next, tip number two, negotiate the fair market value of your car. If your car is totaled in the accident, the insurance adjuster is just going to write a check to you for the fair market value of the vehicle. The fair market value is determined by a number of factors, age, make and model, mileage, prior damage, and pre-crash condition. What kind of condition was it in before the accident? So to prove that your car was in good working condition to the adjuster and get a higher fair market value, produce maintenance records and receipts to the adjuster. Another thing you can do is produce photos if you have photos of your car before and after the accident. You can do that. Basically, you just want to show to the adjuster that it's in good working condition. Another thing that you can do is give the adjuster the Kelly Blue Book value. If the adjuster is giving you a low ball offer for your car, you can say, hey, look at similar cars in the Kelly Blue Book. It's higher. The market value is higher than what you're saying. And that might be one way to persuade the adjuster to raise their offer. Another one would be online websites. Go on websites like cars.com or some other used car website and find cars that are similar to yours in make, model, et cetera, et cetera, and see what they're listed for. Print that out or save it and then send that to the adjuster as well to show that the fair market value, the market price for your type of car with your mileage is much higher than what the adjuster is offering. So now let's move on to tip number three. Take your car to your own trusted body shop or dealership. This tip applies in cases where you have severe property damage. If you've just have minor cosmetic damage to your car, go ahead and take it into the drive-in body shop that the insurance adjuster recommends. If your car has severe major damage, structural damage or possible hidden damage, you're gonna to wanna to take your car to your own body shop, one that you trust, one that you have used in the past. You do not have to use the body shop that the insurance adjuster handling your property damage claim recommends. Those body shops that the insurance adjuster is recommending to you uh, work for the insurance companies. They depend on the insurance companies for their business. They have an incentive to cut corners. They have an incentive to do quick, shoddy work. And I'm not saying that always happens. I'm not saying that happens most of the time, but that risk is there and you should be aware of that. On the other hand, if you take your car in to your own trusted body shop or a dealership, They've got an incentive to be very thorough when inspecting your car and to give you a fair and reasonable uh, estimate of how much it'll cost to repair your car, replace any broken parts. Next, tip number four. You can actually spend the insurance money on whatever you want. The insurance company, once you settle and you sign away your property damage claim, they don't care what you do with the money. You can get your car fixed or you can spend the money on something else, whatever you want. Uh, just know that after you spend the money, that's it. You can't file another claim. Tip number five, you can actually get reimbursed for a rental car. If your car is in the shop and it's taking a long time to repair, maybe they had to order a part and they're waiting for it to come in before they can fix your car, and you're going days or, or maybe even weeks without a car, uh, you're going to need to get a rental car, most likely. And the at-fault driver's insurance should reimburse you for the cost of that rental car. Make sure to ask because a lot of times they're not gonna offer voluntarily. You've got to ask and they have to, if they are delaying or you're waiting and they've agreed to, to pay for the repairs of your car, then they have to pay you for that rental car. If they don't pay you for the rental car because maybe you were at fault for the accident or there's a dispute over who caused the accident, you still might be able to get a rental car reimbursement. Check your insurance policy specifically look at your policy declarations page and see if you have rental car reimbursement normally it'll say something like rental reimbursement thirty dollars a day forty dollars a day whatever the case may be but make sure to check your declarations page you can download a copy usually or if not just call your insurance company and ask the adjuster to send you a copy of your deck page finally tip number six personal property damage claim you can file a property damage claim for things other than just your car. You can actually include other property that was damaged in the accident. 
So for example, if you had a bicycle that was strapped to the back of the car uh, and it was damaged in the wreck, you could file a claim and get money for that damaged bicycle. Or if you were carrying groceries, uh, they were in the back seat of your car, the milk spilled everywhere in the crash or, and all of your groceries were ruined in the accident, that's fine, just produce a receipt to the adjuster. They should pay for the, the personal property that was lost in the accident in addition to your damaged car. So those are my six tips for settling your property damage claim after a car accident. If you made it to this point in the video, I've got some bonus content for you. I've got right here an accident information form. This is a form that you keep in your glove box next to your insurance card with a pen and then hopefully you never have to use it. But if you ever are in an accident and you do have to use it, you can make sure that you got all of the information you're going to need to then later prove up your property damage claim and get paid for your car. This form is 100% free. All you have to do is go on my Facebook page and post on the wall asking for a copy of it or send me a direct message. My Facebook page is facebook.com backslash Wagoner Law Firm PLLC. So those are my six tips for settling your property damage claim. I hope you are able to put them to good work. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Click the subscribe button right below for updates and new videos. If you've got an idea for a topic for a new video, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.